Good evening, everyone, once again. And this is Rashmi from Great HR. And I would like to welcome all of you to our sixth thought leadership webinar, Great HR Mates. And as you all know, the topic for today is building a strong and transparent company culture. Well, uh, when we talk about company culture, we all know that the company culture plays a huge role in determining the success of corporations and businesses. Creating a good company culture is essential to attract and retain the best talent. It will stimulate a strong, cohesive team that can weather challenges and emerge stronger. But how can companies build a strong and transparent culture? What are the strategies HR leaders should adopt to improve employee experience? How has the company culture changed after the pandemic? So in the next one hour, we are going to talk about this in detail uh, with our esteemed speaker, Ms. Emma Davies, uh, Chief People and Culture Excellence Officer. Uh, Masafi LLC and understand how to build a strong and transparent company culture. But before that, let me tell you a little bit more about Ms. Emma here. Uh, so uh, Ms. Emma is a Chief Culture and People Excellence Officer at Masafi LLC. Along with Masafi, Emma also manages the people and culture areas for a real estate portfolio of over 400 units a private investment business, and several other retail businesses. Emma is an experienced hands-on leader providing day-to-day -day advice and guidance on employment legislation, uh, best practices, policies, and procedures, along with all training and development programs. Emma has a successful track record of accomplishing major projects, transforming cultures, encompassing business units integration, HR system implementation, people skills development, and behavioral change management. After years of experience, Emma has been credited for retaining a 97% plus employee satisfaction rate by fostering a culture that promotes people and well-being, talent management, and safety of staff members. Emma also manages the diversity and inclusion policies across the region. Not just that, she is also a founder of the Evolve People Network, a network which is created for people professionals in the GCC region. So Emma has started the network after discovering there were few safe spaces for people uh, professionals across the region. So Ms. Emma, we are happy to have you here. Welcome to this session. Thank you. All right, and I think uh, uh, we also have uh, Mr. Tariq here in this session. Uh, so let me tell you about uh, Mr. Tariq, uh, who is also the partner of Great Acha here. So uh, Tariq Wanas brings over three decades of financial accounting, sales management, senior leadership, and a passion for technology to prosper our systems, where he helps businesses of all sizes streamline processes, reduce expenses, and skyrocket sales and profits. He earned an MBA and a dual degree in business administration and management information system from New York University. I would now request Mr. Tariq to talk about his company's association with Great HR. Thank you, Rashma. It was a pleasure uh, to be with both of you. And uh, thank you, Emma, for joining the seminar and for everyone to uh, join us as well. Um, I want to share my screen and give you a little bit of background on my company and what we do as a partner with uh, Gradient HR. And ho hopefully this will go smoothly. So give me one second and I'll share my screen. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, Mr. Tariq, please go ahead. Terrific, thank you so much. Uh, again, thank you everyone uh, for joining us. 
a little bit of background on on uh, on Prospera and uh, our relationship with Gradient and how we can support uh, support you uh, moving forward if uh, if you need anything in the technology space. Uh, I formed uh, Prospera in 2016 after three decades of working in the uh, accounting and technology space. Uh, and I, I came to Egypt and, and uh, built uh, uh, Prospera Systems really to help companies to innovate and utilize technology to get their companies uh, to make the, their companies excel and help their, their, uh, their employees become more efficient and more profitable. Uh, so our mission as a company is really to work with small businesses to transform their business in, and their, their total automation and digital consultation services is what we provide. And one of the areas that we've done is we've, uh, our, core, our core areas of excellence is working with companies and to understand really what their needs are as a company and what we can do to help them to achieve their, their vision of, of excellence. So what, one of the, the, the things that we're uh, able to do is leverage our years of experience in business. We've seen thousands of businesses of all sizes to, uh, and, and consulting them and helping them to tailor the technology with the best practices to get them uh, uh, up in, in, the, in the technology space. We've partnered up with some of the top names in the industry uh, Gradient HR for our HR platforms, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But we're also partners of Zoho, uh, Wallpost, uh, Oracle NetSuite, and we have our own accounting uh, practice and accounting firm. So we've got an accounting practice and all Ishtashar. So we can help help every uh, every business in from the accounting to HR, the implementation. Our core, our core services include ERP implementation, HR management, payroll, management advisory, bookkeeping, and accounting. And one of the great things with working with uh, Gradient HR is it's giving us a tool that is helping companies to enhance their culture and enhance their ability to serve their employees, make their employees happier. And it takes care of all the HR payroll function. Uh, and then we tie that into their ERP platforms or we tie it into the bookkeeping and accounting function. So it becomes a seamless integration with it. Our core discipline, of course, is if you look at our HR, our, excuse me, our, uh, our ERP, it serves a full cycle of everything that you a company would need from human resources, payroll, customer relations, all the financial areas, uh, performance management, task management, and operations for specifically for your individual uh, company operations. That's what we do at Prospera, and we would love to work with you and help you in anything that you may need. Uh, I've put my contact information here. You've obviously all are linked to me on LinkedIn. I would love to uh, to hear from you if we can support you in any way. And uh, I'm really looking forward to getting more information from Emma about how we can build this uh, company, you know, our, our company culture. Thank you, Rashma. Back to you. Thank you, Mr. Thank. Uh, now moving on to today's discussion uh, on our topic, building a strong and transparent company culture. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Emma, uh, let's start with basics. <laughs> uh, so, what are the elements of a strong and transparent company culture according to you? Oh, according to me, and I, I would hope it's from my fellow uh, people professionals out there, I'm going to start with empathy. Um, and as of today, I'm sure you've all heard about the tech layoffs and everything where I don't think I don't think that's been fostered too much around the culture. But empathy, leadership, communication, inclusion. I think those things, when they come together, if you're, you're fostering respect, collaboration, you have clear expectations with your employees, um, open communication, 
team management and staff. And I know we hear about it all the time when people say, oh, we have an open door policy here, but people don't really come. It, it's actually a two way door. It isn't just staff coming into management to talk. We have a very open door policy here at Masafi. And that's something we firmly believe in. You know, I sit with my team. I don't sit in an office. I sit I'm on the ground with with everybody and everybody has access to me. That's that's real open door policy. And that kind of culture encourages that communication. Um, you have to give people meaningful work, um, opportunities, give them growth for development. I think work-life balance comes into that culture piece. Um, but ultimately, culture is only created by trust and safety and that your employees feel that they feel that they trust you and they feel safe and they know they work in a safe environment. Um, we, we've done a lot of work on that over the past four years as a business. Sure, sure. Thanks for answering that. Uh, next thing, uh, would you please help us understand uh, what has changed in the company culture post the pandemic? Oh, wow. OK. It feels like ages ago when we're talking about what happened with the pandemic and how how we had to adapt, how we had to be so agile. And I think what we did, especially well at Masafi, was we were super agile. We were quick. We realized overnight we were going to shut our offices. Now, of course, we were essential workers. We weren't on the front line like the nurses and doctors and all the wonderful people who helped um the communities but we were serving water so we, we had to be you know that had to carry on because people in dubai and across the uae still needed water delivered and they couldn't really go out as easily to get it um so see we were front line my biggest concern during that time was protecting our frontline workers. Um, and so we looked at our culture and we said, what can we do to foster that inclusion? Because it's all very well saying your office staff were safe. That's a great, that's a great culture, but what about the people who are on the front line? So we did a lot of work around that during the time of the pandemic, um, making it a safe space for people, checking in on everybody, having constant communication with people. Um, we did things like we had to, um, th the biggest concern, during the time of the pandemic for our staff was not catching COVID. It was actually how they were going to protect their families back home, how they were going to still send their salary, how they were going to do all those things because, because they didn't know. Communications weren't shut down as such, but it, it, it became a lot more difficult. So we did a lot as a company around that where we, and I, that changed our culture, that brought us together, that transparency, that communication, that helping nature really was driven from the top and it has to be driven from the top always so we did things like we arranged for an atm to come to our staff accommodation so that people could withdraw their salaries which were always paid on time and we didn't do any salary cuts or anything like that so that they could they could send the money home to their to their families which was the critical aspect for them we, we put all processes in place to make sure that happened but what happened to our culture post that was was we came together I don't, and I don't like to call fat to work family because we don't often have to have difficult disciplinary conversations and stuff with our children um, some people do my children may say that I do do that with them um, but what we did was we, we fostered that um, what we'd been building in that culture and we actually saw our, com our company engagement go up to nine um, during the time of the pandemic we use a score system a poll system called office five but we saw it go up to nine because we fostered that communication, everybody knew what was going on. Everybody understood what was going to happen. Um, I know myself, I we did we had to do a lot of video communication with people um, so that they could see the leaders. They could see that we were still here. We were still supporting them. We were able to come back to the office very quickly again because we were essential. And we actually found that a lot of people needed to come back to the office. Um, obviously, in Dubai, we're all expats. People wanted to come back in. They wanted that communication. We had to keep people safe. We had to keep them apart. But it was very well managed. And I think that for us was a defining moment in our culture that we, we saw a complete change. Um, and that was from everybody, from our management team, from, from everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely, Ms. Emma. I think uh, the pandemic has had a tremendous and swift effects on all the workplaces and the culture around, right? Uh, because we just didn't change. In fact, the whole world learned how to adjust with the upcoming yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, I think you have brought it up uh, in a very wonderful way here. So thanks for uh, mentioning it here. Uh, so I'll just go to our next question. Uh, so next thing is, uh, can you please help us understand uh, to sustain a transparent and strong company culture, it is imperative that the organization leaders also engage with the employees on a regular basis, right? So what are some of the engagement strategies that you would recommend? 
I look and it's some people think this is rocket science and it really isn't um a it does have to come from the top so if, if your ceo doesn't believe in it if you if your leaders don't believe in it then you, you really are wasting your time because it's it's just a bit fake so we're really lucky that we have a really strong leadership team we have a really strong ceo who absolutely fosters that collaboration he believes in it he's talked all the time we're, we're very lucky but I think the critical thing is you just need to be honest and transparent, even if things are not going well, if people know and it doesn't come as a shock. I'm sure you've all seen Google just switching off everybody's emails or switching off their access cards that even if people knew something was going to happen, that was still a shock. That wasn't the way I personally would have done it and um, create uh, create that place where employees are able to come and talk to you, where they are. They're in a comfortable work environment. You can use the latest technology. You know, you can use all of these things. We're able to communicate all the time these days. There's no problem with with those kind of things. Um, but when it's difficult, talk. When it's not difficult, talk. Some, and some of the team members here may say I do a bit too much of that. But I believe in inclusivity. I believe in including everyone. So it's I have to go out and talk to our, our frontline staff, our essential workers. I, I can't expect that to be done by somebody else. That's my job. And if there are problems, if we're making changes, we are we are making changes as an organisation at the moment. Um, but we've told everybody and we've told everybody what we're going to do and how we're going to do it so that everybody is aware and they have access to me to have those discussions and access to their line managers and access to the CEO. So it's about that going back to, again, open door policy. Um, on the good side of things, when, when things are going great and we, we did, we have had some really good good things happen to us as a business you know reward and recognition people if people know what they're doing well they do more of it people are always proud they you know if you say you've done a really great job there you're likely to get a lot more from somebody who is constantly being told oh actually you did that wrong or an understanding and line managers understanding how people what motivates people because different things motivate different people you know I have to say, giving everybody a pay rise isn't always the answer. I know maybe employees don't think that, but you can give everybody a pay rise tomorrow and day two, you're still going to have questions. And why did I get this? Why didn't I get that? If you are constantly talking to people, carrying out, we like I say, we do pulse surveys. So we do a sense check every week on what the pulse is feeling, what the, what the pulse of our business is. So recognition, positive work-life balance. You know, we we achieved um, an amazing feat. We have a 100% response rate to our employee satisfaction survey. Didn't mind what the score was, but I wanted to know that everybody was able to access it. Everybody was talking. So everybody was given a well-being day where they could go and do what they liked. They didn't have to come to work. They didn't have to, if whatever they chose to do for their well-being. And that was probably more powerful than a, an immediate small pay rise for everybody. So it's doing things like that. It's the recognition. Um, I think those things create loyalty, productivity, and satisfaction across the group. Brilliant. Yes, Emma. I think uh, if I have to summarize it, I think uh, it's all about these four C's, communication, care, career, and competence, right? It's all about the employees. Uh, because when we say employee engagement, it is not just about engaging them. It's about engaging them in a more meaningful way. So yeah, I think Absolutely. you have brought up a very valid uh, points here. So thanks for that. Uh, next thing I would like to hear from you, Emma, is about uh, the very well-known uh, uh, DIB culture in the HR industry, right? So the question is, how can HR leaders implement a culture of DIB, that is diversity, equity, inclusion, belongingness at the workplace? So when we talk about belonging, um, I think that's quite a difficult one to kind of, if you haven't got a great culture, you haven't got your, your employee engagement right, belonging doesn't isn't necessarily there. So that's really important. Get the engagement, get the culture. Um, diversity, inclusion and equality. You know, we're very lucky in the Middle East because we are able to have a very diverse workforce very quickly because it, we're all expats, we'll come together. Um, for me, it's about inclusion and it's inclusion at every level. And it's really easy to do things for people in head office. It's really easy to think of inclusivity of certain nationalities if you've got more. But for me, it's about absolutely everybody and including everybody. And we have a task force across our business who look at diversity and inclusion and equality. Um, that's their role. They they look at how we are, we're creating that inclusive environment for all individuals. Um, we listen. We have, you know... A, we make sure our teams are diverse. We, we do manage our nationality checks, our equality checks. 50% of our leaders in this business are female. Um, but it's about inclusion at all levels. And I think that 
HR leaders have the responsibility to create that environment. We don't necessarily have to um, do it ourselves because it should be everybody. And that's the inclusion part of it. So everybody should feel accepted and valued in the workplace. Absolutely, absolutely, Ms. Emma. Uh, also, I think uh, this DIB culture has emerged as a pillar for business and human resources these days, right? Uh, because due to this, I think companies have now shifted their focus to building, uh, like you rightly said, inclusive workplace that drive the sustainable growth and innovation. So thanks for sharing your thoughts on that, Ms. Emma. Uh, so since we're already talking about uh, the strong company culture, uh, can we just... Um, uh, discuss a little bit about uh, the HR role as in like HR role we understand that it plays a big role in people process and culture integration as well right so as someone who heads an HR team uh, how do you approach the convergence of this okay so we moved away from being HR some time ago um when I came into this business it was um as a uh, director of people and my role is now chief people and culture excellence because I don't do HR. HR can be looked at as an admin task. It's about the people. If we haven't got the people in our business, and no matter how much automation comes in, we will always need some people. Um, it's it's about people and culture. And that's although it's, it's it can't just be done by me, because if it was me, it would be my culture, wouldn't it? It would be what I was saying all the time. So it's about the whole business culture and what you want that to look like. We have to lead it by behaving the right way, uh, by being inclusive. You know, if you find your people and culture team aren't inclusive, then you've got a problem. So I think it's everybody. It's not just um, people and culture, but for us as a business, that's something that we've spread across all our leaders. We, we're talking about KPIs, objective settings, and we do monthly check-ins. We do quick chats. Everybody has people in their KPIs. We don't. It, it's not just business KPIs because it's about culture. It's about what are your team saying to you? What does your attrition look like? What are your people saying? What are your scores? How are you managing those relationships? And they build the culture. It shouldn't just be led by um, HR. Sure. Uh, also, Emma, uh, do you think uh, by not integrating these elements, uh, it would lead to downfall? If yes, then <laughs> what are the downfalls of not integrating these three elements properly? If, if you know, if you don't care about your culture, you're going to get what you've always got. And I can tell you this, that we have succeeded as a business. As our employee satisfaction has risen, it has translated in our sales figures. It has translated in our numbers. And I would I have said that to you four years ago that was possible maybe not but now I look at it I can see a direct correlation so culture is better employee engagement is better sales are better our numbers are better our people are better that's they there you have it that that's your downfall if you don't do it right yes uh also Emma uh can you please throw some light on the best practices or the initiatives uh, as in uh what are some of the best practices or initiatives that you have come across in building a strong culture oh so there's so many and there's so many things that we've done that we forget and we don't talk about um but the inclusive environment first of all everybody needs to feel valued and respected everybody needs to again it, and I keep going back to that safe working space um communication open communication and people knowing there's a trust element there that they can come and talk so we do our employee satisfaction system for instance does have an anonymous button lots of people have started to switch that anonymous button off because they've told us things and we fix them because it's great knowing what employees think if you don't do something about it it's an absolute waste of time that, and people stop telling you because they're like why would you do that so Things like celebrating their successes. That was one of the things that came up that our employees wanted from us. They wanted to know what was going well. So we make sure that we talk, we, you know, and it's, again, getting everybody together, celebrating those successes. Um, I'm sure you saw on LinkedIn, we did a massive end of year party um, internally, kind of a festive thing. I couldn't have wished for more. I actually spent most of the day crying, actually, because I was so happy about what had happened and how everybody had joined in and come together to celebrate our successes over that year. You know, yeah, we had some themes and we did have some food, but those kind of things cultivate. Also, you know, think about growth mindset. Think about how your employees are going to grow and develop, because if you don't do internal development for people, they will leave. And yes, it's great that people leave and go on to new things. And we, we've seen some senior people leave this year. And it's brilliant because they've gone on to amazing new jobs. 
but we're really looking at that internally at the moment. It's how we can grow people internally. So, for instance, our CFO was our treasury manager. She's grown into that position. Um, one of our um, security guards, who is um, one, I always have an image of him when it rained here last time as it's raining today. He was the one who was sweeping the water out with me out of the front doors because we still have to do things like that in our business, you know. Um, he is now one of our customer experience managers. So he is out meeting our customers and he, and that's great. That's where you should be looking at internal growth. Those things, giving them autonomy, innovation, creativity, all those things around development, they build your culture. Definitely, Emma. I think, yeah, like you rightly said, uh, creating a good company culture is very essential to attract and retain the best talent, I guess. So, yeah, uh, thanks uh, for pondering on these points. Uh, so I'll just move to our next question. Uh, since we already spoke about the best practices, uh, now let's look at the other side of it. Uh, that What can be the challenges of building a transparent culture and how can HR leaders overcome those? Look, it, it isn't e easy. And, it, you know, it's actually easier to, sorry, it, it, it's, it's easier to fix something that's really broken than it is to fix something that's going okay and how do we do that? Um, it can be a challenge, especially for HR, because people sometimes think that we are the owners of it. And like I've said, we are not the owners. It has to come from the business. If there is a lack of trust between management employees to build that trust, you have to do what you say you are going to do. And you have to, it, because the first time you don't, that's when it starts to fail again. And people go, you said you were going to do that. And actually you didn't. So it's develop that trust, have those open conversations, have the problems, find out what's wrong. Look at your processes. If you've got processes that suggest you don't trust your employees, OK, you can't change that on day one because obviously you've got to start building these things. But they are the things that you can do to foster a more open and honest environment. And as people start to see from both parties, because it is a two way street. OK, that's I think that's quite clear when when you've got difficult environments, it's got to be two way. As that starts to change, as people start to be able to express their ideas, understand that they're implemented, understand why, why you can't implement everything. You know, if you go back to people and say, well, we can't do that because of X, Y, Z, people are a lot more acknowledging, a lot more willing to be on team culture so I think there's regular team you know we did simple stuff we had regular team meetings we talked to people we told people what was going on we told people what we were changing we told people why we were changing things we told them why we couldn't change some things and for us those that worked that was the constant feed of communication and talking about why things were happening all right uh, so i'll just move to our next question but before that uh, dear participants if you have any questions on what we are currently discussing uh, you can start putting them across in the q and a option of the zoom control panel uh, in a few minutes we will be taking up your questions and we'll be more than happy to answer them as well all right so coming back to our questions uh, uh, ms emma while uh, you have elaborated on how the challenges uh, can occur in the workplace and how they affect us uh, now the question is um, how do transparent culture impact the employee experience and performance yeah i mean i can, I can explain it very simply when i joined our employee um, satisfaction rate sat at three and that was, and this is not me, by the way, I want to be really clear. This is work that a whole team and a whole group of people, the whole business have done to come together to deliver this. So we sat at a three about four years ago. And now in pandemic, we hit a height. We were at over nine. And today we sit, we've just jumped again another marker. So we're at 8.1. That has been due to our transparent culture. That, again, driven employee performance. We've seen absolutely outstanding results this year, um, 2022, and we continue to see them as we go into 2023 and end of month one. We have seen teams, you know, sales and finance boards kind of fight, sales and marketing fight, everyone fights with people and culture, apparently. We have got such a tight knit team in our business now that everybody works as one. Um, we're one group, we're going in one direction, and we're not using our numbers this year as our target, we're using them as our baseline. So our numbers that we want to achieve are our base, not our target. Our target is North Star Vision now, and we, we've got the ability to do that because of our culture and because of the transparent operations, how people understand, everybody understands where we're going, and we're going as a group. And by doing that, that's how you succeed. 
All right. Uh, also, Ms. Emma, uh, as we all know, technology can be a boon if we use it right, right? Uh, so do you think technology has a role to play here? Uh, I mean, how can technology play a role in creating a work culture uh, which is strong, fair, and transparent? Look, there's lo and there's loads of different systems you can use. We, like I say, we use Office Five. It's a pulse survey, so I have an instant, I have an instant understanding of how every department feels. It's not just the business. I can break it down to department. I can break it down uh, by diversity and equality as well. I can tell you nationality, how that's feeling. I can tell you how women feel in the business. I can feel how tell you how men feel in the business. So. For me, that kind of technology is incredible, but also we need to start looking at artificial intelligence. We start needing to be able to reading into things, understanding what more of those feedback, what, what it actually means. You know, is that person feeling unsafe because they've said X, Y, Z? How can I help them? How can we support them? I think enabling employees to be able to collaborate with one another wherever they are in the world. I mean, our factory is only an hour away in Masafi, but sometimes that does feel like hours, especially on days like today with weather like this. So enabling that instant reaction we can instantly react we're agile and we can change things you know we've got drivers out on the roads today in this rain so one of the things about technology is we will we were instantly checking how everybody is is everybody safe is everybody okay the roads are dangerous that fosters collaboration communication that makes employees feel like they're valued um we've we and, and we're using technology to do that so yeah for me i think um performance it, it drives performance um People, people actually like it. People like to know that you're asking if they're okay. And that, that's how I use it within the people and culture side here at Masafi. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, Ms. Emma, I think it all comes down to two things, right? Uh, like you rightly mentioned, it's about connection and the values. So I think technology helps uh, solve both parts of the equation. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. Uh, I'll uh, just take up one last question from my end and then we can head towards the audience questions. Uh, so, well, to conclude, uh, uh, what are the key focus areas for HR leaders in the Middle East to build a strong workplace in 2023? Would like to hear suggestions from you on this. Oh, gosh. Wow. <laughs> so, communication. Um, if, if things are going to change, if, if things are going to impact people, let's talk to people. Let's have an understanding. Let's not just assume people have read their emails. Um, I go back to it. Don't switch off somebody's mail if you want to fire them. Um, we have also ripped up all our processes and procedures um, for, from a people and culture perspective here because we are turning everything on its head within my department. If we don't need to do something or if we need to do it better, the only way to do it is start from scratch. So that's what we're certainly looking at. Um, the way I look at it with every process, if you, if you can't explain it to somebody outside or you'd be embarrassed to, then, then there's probably something wrong. Um, look at that inclusion and diversity piece. Ensure you are being truly inclusive. You know, I think it's all very well to just say it sometimes, but inclusivity, equality and that belonging, the belonging comes with the culture. Um, use technology to streamline those processes that you're ripping up. We certainly are. Um, and just challenge, challenge everything, because We've got such an opportunity ahead of us this year in all businesses to achieve, to deliver using our people. And if we can do it better and faster with those people, like, I mean, I'm going to have a new HR system this year. And that for me is going to be my people are actually going to have time to do real people stuff. You know, they're not going to be processing letters and things that we just kind of accepted as them. So I think that challenge everything. Um, if you see a decision isn't right, challenge it with your with your people, challenge it with your leaders, um, but keep moving towards that situation of trust. Wonderful, Emma. I think uh, we have ended our first part of the uh, discussion in a very beautiful way. Uh, thank you for enlightening us on uh, uh, this topic. Uh, so, dear participants, I can now say that time is all yours. You can start putting across your questions and we will be happy to take them up here. Uh, uh, Emma, I can already see there are a couple of questions here from audience. So, I'll just take them up one by one one so one of our attendee uh, would like to know uh, can you please suggest some tools or strategies to measure the success of culture initiatives um we we use a tool um called office vibe like i said it's a pulse survey so we check every time we do something 
um, we, we measure it on there. So we can see very quickly whether something is working or not. Um, there are many tools out there. So it's got to be something that's right for your business. We've looked at other ones as well. Um, I like agility. I like quick information. I believe that doing a survey and then having the result in three months doesn't really give you that option to change things immediately. So that's why a system like that has worked for me on, on the measurement. All right. Yeah. Thanks for answering that. So I hope that answers the question. Uh, also, Emma, we just discussed about the role of uh, uh, HRs and the leaders uh, towards the transparent work culture. Right. So one of our attendees would like to know what is the role of managers in this? Managers should be doing it every day. That's a manager's job. So <laughs> managers, managers only actually mainly manage people. So every day, those managers should be encouraging that culture. They are the ones that should be communicating. They are on the front line um, because not everybody will feel comfortable coming and talking to HR. You know, they, they don't. It's, it's a fact of life and people just kind of shy away from us. I know people do for me. Um, but so it's a manager's job. The manager's role is to deliver that culture and it has to be, it's it's kind of a two-way process. Again, it's cascade down and cascade up. Expect your managers to, to be part of that culture and be driving that change. And if they're not, look at whether they're the right people for your business. Right, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I hope this answers the question. Thanks for that, Emma. Uh, uh, next thing is uh, one of our attendees would like to know, this is, I think, a very interesting question. Uh, please recommend some exciting employee engagement initiatives for a hybrid working model. Oh, OK. Um, so look, hybrid is interesting because I know everybody's saying, you know, it's the end of remote work. It's all of those things. Actually, we found that on days like today, people don't want to travel, so it's easy to remote work. They can they can do that. We have made sure that everybody is included. So when we do events, we make sure that people are invited so that they know that they can come here. We don't have a workforce outside of the UAE. So for me, it's very easy because we're all quite local to one another. Um, but my teams still kind of go online. They've done quizzes. They've done all of that kind of thing where people can't necessarily get to the office. We've tried to be as inclusive as we can um, to make sure that things aren't set for instance, in school holidays, because inclusivity means that mums and dads might not be able to be there because they've taken their leave to look after their children. So we've we've taken it from that respect rather than a hybrid working environment because we're all mainly based between sites. We do have remote working though. <laughs> Sure. All right. So I think that answers the question. Uh, our next thing is um, are the other attendee of ours would like to know what are the factors that contribute towards a negative work culture? How should we fight back the same? <laughs> oh, we don't fight. We come together mm -hmm. and we win together. <laughs> Um, look, there's lots of negative factors that can impact your culture. If you've got in uh, micro cultures, I found that's quite difficult to manage. Um, we That's why we kind of tried to break those down. We, we certainly did used to have some here where we've broken those kind of micro cultures down in each department. They weren't coming together as the bigger picture. Um, and it's getting in there and understanding why that micro culture is there and what's driving that culture. Uh, generally, I found it's been led by managers. So it's about getting them on board with the wider company culture. Um, positivity, positivity, positivity and communication, trust, respect, integration, use all those tools to gain everybody's trust. Because if, if you can't, then you will get those microcultures. Um, people want different things. So you can include everything, you know, for, for like our sales team, when we gave everybody a well-being day, they said they weren't particularly, they couldn't necessarily take that time off. So we said, OK, what can we do for you as a team? Is there something different you'd like to do? So they're conversations that we have to make sure, again, that though, that culture is everybody's included. Sure. Uh, since we are already talking about including everyone, Emma, uh, I think this is a follow up question. So I'll just uh, take this up. So uh, one of our attendees would like to know what are the traits of an inclusive workplace? Oh, gosh, well, the traits, so it's, it's communication, it's trust, it's respect, it's honesty. It's all of those things that we actually should expect and demand on a day to day basis. That is how we should all behave. Um, and if you're not seeing that, then it's not necessarily an inclusive workplace. Um, I think that I, I look around our office and I know I have that feeling for everybody. I know I have. I know that if people came and speak to me and told me there's a problem, I'd do everything I could to fix that for them. And it's and that's not always saying yes from a people and culture perspective. I can't I can't solve everybody's problems. But what we can do is we can offer support. You know, we have 
a really good mental health team behind us here at Masafi who who support our people with mental health. That's inclusivity. That that's checking everybody's okay. You know, years ago we would have never even thought of that. Um, those kind of things. And I just think there's a lot we can do, but it's those factors. It's that trust, respect, and honesty and communication. All right. So I think communication is the key here then. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it up, Ms. Iman. I think that answers the question. Uh, next thing is, one of our attendees would like to know about the onboarding programs. Okay. So the question is, uh, while designing the onboarding programs, how can we reflect the positive work culture of our organization? Is there any scope for it? Yeah, so we're literally ripping up our onboarding program at the moment because it's a bit average, to be honest. We're changing it. We're looking at what we can do. And we're saying like, it's, so it should be from day one, you should feel like you're part of us. You know, you should, I, I think we've done a lot of work with our recruitment team. Our recruitment team are on top of everything. I know a lot of people say, well, we don't hear back from you, but we do get over 1500 emails a day into our recruitment inbox. So that makes it a little bit harder for the team, very small team, team of two. Um, but we've now dedicated somebody to onboarding. But what we're looking at is using using AI as well to get that onboarding practice so that people, so it feels like you're here from day one because some people have quite long notice periods. And so if you accept a job today and then you have to wait three months to join, you might not feel like you're part of it so what we're doing is we're looking at artificial intelligence we're looking at technology so how we can transform our onboarding experience wonderful so i think that helps uh, so i'll just uh, move to the next question uh, so the next question is how can we improve employee experience in a work from home model Oh, well, look, it, it depends. Some people really like working from home and some people don't. I know it doesn't work particularly well for me. <laughs> I, I like to be in the office. I like to be around people. But it's not what we must do. Again, it goes back to that inclusivity. Don't forget those people are there. Don't then say, well, we're having a town hall and everybody's in the office on, you know, Friday lunchtime at one o'clock, because how are those people going to engage? Have you thought about communicating with them as well? So, for instance, we do have we have massive screens all around our inspiration station, which is our area where we bring everyone together. So we make sure if people are working from home, they can log in. Everything we do, if it's um, Zoom calls like this, it's, it's able to be accessed. We make sure everybody's got smartphones so they can access. Um, but like I say, for us, it is slightly different because most of our people are back in the office. So we found it's, it's easier to engage. People who have um, had to go home for longer periods of time and work from home because things have happened to their family, because these things do happen, we've made sure to stay in touch with them. They're not just doing a day job. You know, there's that, are you OK conversation? Is there anything more you need support with? And that comes from a line manager and it's system driven from us as well, from the people and culture team. We do check ins with people. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope that answers the question. Uh, so the next uh, question is, how important is it to take the feedback from employees? So uh, the uh, explanation for this is as we design many strategies and initiatives, but sometimes we fail to take regular feedback from the employees. So how do Absolutely. we solve this? It's the most important thing you can do because... And look, you're, you're going to get some people who, no, not everybody's going to like everything all of the time. So you're going to get people who don't like this, they like this, and it's different. So again, that goes back to inclusivity, making sure you've covered everybody and thought about everybody, but it's okay if they don't all like it all of the time. We, if you don't, if you get feedback and you do nothing with it, that's more damaging than getting no feedback. So absolutely use what you can and train your managers in giving feedback because we don't always like giving feedback to people, do we? It's not the most comfortable thing. If it's sometimes it might be negative, might be a bit difficult. Train your managers, train your leaders, make sure they're able to have open and honest conversations. If they aren't those people, because some people have got other skills, use the right people that have. Use your internal coaches. For instance, I'm a coach. I coach people in the business on conversations. Use that skill to give the feedback. But if you don't give feedback, it's more damaging. So what we do is, so for instance, on our office vibe system, people can write feedback. They, they write the feedback and I respond, as does the line manager. It's open to all. And I think those things are absolutely critical because if you don't respond to the feedback, people will stop talking to you and they will stop telling you the problems. Or I'm, t I'm telling you the success as well. Let's be positive about it. They'll stop telling you about the successes. Sure. Uh, also, Emma, I think uh, uh, it's all about social media today, right? Uh, so the question is around that now. Uh, so how can we use social media to create a strong company culture? 
Yeah, you're speaking to somebody who's just come off social media. I'm doing a January kind of detox around social media. Um, I'm still on LinkedIn, but I've, I've come off every other form because it was it was having a negative impact on me personally. I was getting frustrated with things that I was seeing and it, and it wasn't it was bad for my mental health. So I've, I've actually come off social media. Um, we are using social media differently now. So normally as an FMCG company, social media is only used for your product to to sell your product to people that's a big thing I, I was I'd not been in FMCG before so I didn't know that when I joined here we've flipped on its head now so we're using it for employee engagement well, our social media manager we've actually gone out and got somebody who's not from retail so that our marketing is around our employees it's around our consumers because ultimately our employees are our biggest customer so it's that we've got to look after them so we talk about what we're doing with them we're using social media in a much more positive manner um, for Masafi and for other businesses but yeah, it, it's, it has a big impact. And people see, when people see that you look after your employees and they see that you care, they have a different view on your product. So we might, you know, we're the only natural water, fantastic, but we care about our employees and that drives consumer behavior. Sure. Uh, so I'll just take up one last question, Emma. Uh, so this is about the training program. So I think we have uh, discussed about this, but if there is anything specific that you would like to touch upon, I think here we go. Uh, so the question is, uh, are there any training programs that you'd recommend for employees uh, to foster a positive workplace culture? It's not really about training um, in, in that sense. It's about development. It's about coaching. It's about if you want to be a, if you want to be a, a champion of change, a champion of culture change. And we have these people in our businesses. They're called our culture connectors. And I'm sure in all your businesses, you know, you can instantly think of someone. You think that person's a culture connector. That's the person I need to drive the change with. Develop those people to help you drive that change. Um, I don't necessarily think there's an employee course, a learning course you can go on to change culture. I think it's got to come from your own behaviours. I think it's got to come from a want from the business. Um, and I think that use culture connectors, use the people in your business to drive that change. Sure, sure. Absolutely. So thank you so much, uh, Emma, for sharing your wonderful thoughts on this. I think this absolutely answers the question. Uh, I think uh, with this now we have come to the end of the discussion. Uh, and also, if there are any more questions, dear participants, uh, please don't be disappointed. Uh, you can always write back to us and uh, seek the responses. Uh, and also, once again, thank you, Miss Emma, for this session. You have certainly given us a lot of great insights on building a strong and transparent company culture. Uh, also, thank you, Mr. Tarek, for being part of this uh, uh, wonderful event and uh, for making it a huge success. And also, dear participants, thank you for attending and um, you have also contributed a lot in this success. So if you have any more questions, please write back to us on uh, the mail ID that you can see on the screen. That is yasser.rafat at the rate of creative.com. And we will definitely get back to you. All right. Well, we'll see you in the uh, next session again now uh, with another interesting topic. Uh, till then, have a great time. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.